Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. So I am back again with another highly requested video from you guys, which is for me to start posting more React videos. So here I am today, back with another React project. So we'll be building this task tracker or a to-do list if you want to call it using React.js as well as local storage. So let's see how our task tracker works. So we have this task input here where we can just input anything. I'll just call this task one and then once we're happy, we can we can hit add task, and it'll actually create a task component for us down here and add it to our task list component. And if you don't know what I'm talking about right now, you will soon once we start coding it up. So there we go. We have our task with a checkbox next to it. So if we hit check, it's not going to do anything besides check the task. But if we click remove task, it's going to remove it. So let me do that again. But this time, I'm not going to check it. If I just hit the remove task button, it's not going to remove it. It only removes the tasks that are already checked. So basically in JavaScript, we use the filter method to filter through all of our tasks and check to see which ones are already completed and which ones are not. And we can tell if it's completed by whether it's checked or not. And delete all tasks, that just deletes it no matter what. So even if you didn't hit the check mark, it's still going to delete it. So if I just add a bunch of tasks like this, and then hit delete all tasks, it's just going to delete all of it. And if I refresh, it's going to stay deleted. Now, let me show you guys the cool part, which is local storage. So let's say task one, task two, and now I'm going to refresh my page. And as you guys notice, our tasks are still there, even though I, ref I refresh the page. And that's because local storage is storing all these tasks into its storage so that it can pull it out the next time we come visit the page or if we refresh it. Anyways, enough of the talking and let's get right into the video. So first we're going to want to go to our command line and then create a new React app by doing npx create React app. And as usual, this is going to take a little while, so I'll be back once it's done. And also, you'll want to give your direct directory a name, so I'll just call this React Task Tracker. And then we want it to be created in this current directory. So I'll just put a dot after it and then hit enter. And I'll be back once it's done. Oh, and also one other one other thing you guys might want to keep in mind is that when you're creating your directory name, you want to make sure that it's not camel cased or it contains any capital letters because uh, the terminal is just picky that way. So you'll want to do create react app. And we're going to use the same name as before. I'll just say react task tracker, but this time all lowercase. And this should work. So I'll be back once it's done. Alright guys, welcome back. So our React app has finished installing, so now let's take a look at it. So as you guys remember, we called our directory React Task Tracker, so I'm just going to click on this here. And now as you can see inside, we have some other stuff like a public folder and the source folder, which is pretty much all we need to worry about right now because the public folder, it pretty much only contains the index.html, which renders our React app onto the browser, so we don't really need to work with that that much. So let's, let's close that and now go into our source folder. And in here we have our app.js, which is pretty much the main component that we'll be dealing with. But we'll also be creating our some of our own custom components, like the button component to create those two buttons that we had on our browser. I mean, four buttons. And yeah, let's get right to work. So first, let's remove everything between these divs. So get rid of the header completely. And now we can delete the logo. We're not going to need that. Oh, and also let's cd into that directory we created. So React Task Tracker. And then we do npm start to, to open it on the browser. And there we go. We have our app up and running. And just to make sure that our app is actually working, I'm just going to add an h1 here and say, hello, Kenny. And if that shows up, we're good. There we go. So awesome. Everything works. So now let's start deleting some stuff that we don't need. So we don't need this app test.js file. We also don't need the index CSS, but if we remove this, it's going to throw off an error since it's being referenced in another folder, which is the index.js. So let's remove this import statement. And we also don't need report vitals. Don't need this comment. Get rid of this folder. Get rid of the logo SVG. Don't need this getting order either. And that's pretty much all we need to get rid of. And this is all the files that we'll be working with. So now let's go back to our app.js. Get rid of this h1 and all right so now let's start by importing some stuff okay now let's start by importing some hooks that we'll be needing to so let's import use state use use ref and the use 
effect hook. And now let's import a task list component, which doesn't exist yet, from dot slash components. We forgot the P. Components slash task list. And that's going to throw off an error once again because it doesn't exist, but we'll create that in a second. And also let's import our index CSS so that our styles will be applied once we start styling. And let's import our button which also doesn't exist yet, but as I said, we'll create it in a second. So now let's go into our source folder, create a folder called components, and then in here we'll want to have a file called tasklist.jsx or js, depending on which extension you prefer to use. And we'll also want to create another component inside this component folder called button.js. And index.css does not exist since I deleted that already, so let's just get rid of this import. I don't know why I did that in the first place. And we should be good now. Alright, so let's start by... Alright, we should be good now. So let's create a local storage key to store our local storage key, as you can tell. And then we can go inside of our app function. So let me get rid of this and put this outside of the function and go inside of the function. And we'll just create a, a piece of state and we'll call it tasks. Tasks. Um, set tasks equals use state and if you don't know how the use state hook works uh, I've made a video on that in the past so you can go check it out I'll have it linked in the cards below or description so next we'll also need the use ref hook so we'll do tasks ref this hook will allow us to grab the value that the user inputs into the input field which is helpful when for when we start appending the task that they typed in onto the UI so next we'll create a use effect We'll use use effect to do all the local storage stuff. So we'll say const store tasks equals json.parse. So we can say local storage.get item. And we pass in our key, which we call the local storage key. And then we can say if store tasks, which is pretty much saying if store tasks exist or if there's any tasks at all, then we'll want to do set tasks to store tasks. So this is basically saying whenever you refresh the page, it's going to store all of our tasks onto local storage and then when we revisit it or after the page has finished refreshing our browser react will go into the store will go into local storage and look for any tasks with the key of local storage key and if there are any tasks it's going to add it to our state and then our state will pretty much handle it from there and put it onto the browser for us to see. So that's pretty much how this all this backend stuff is working. And also we want to pass in an empty dependency array so that it's going to run as soon as the page loads. And then we'll want to have another use effect. And for this, we're just going to do local storage dot set item. We'll set it to the local storage key that we created. And then we'll say json.stringify tasks. We'll add tasks in here like so. And let's go to our button component and and start coding that up as well. So we'll just say refce, which is a React snippet tool that allows you to easily generate any type of function you want to create in React. So this is an arrow function. And in React, they have these things called props, which allows you to get certain data about an element. So we can pass, we can destructure it and then do bg color because we want our button to have a custom background color, which we'll set later in the video. Then we'll want text color text and then on click which is the event that it's going to run the function is going to fire off and then padding bottom and then right and right so now let's go inside of this div and create a button and we're going to say class name equals buttons and then we'll set background color to bg color so we're referencing the parameter that we initialized and then we'll say color will be text color and the rest is pretty intuitive if you guys want to you can skip forward a little Padding will just be padding. Right will be right. <laughs> um, bottom will be bottom. And for the onclick event, for the button, it's going to be onclick. And to clarify, this onclick is is the event listener, and this onclick is the function that's being passed in as a prop, which will then be converted into an event listener, if that kind of makes sense. And then for our button, we want to give it a text as well, so we'll say text like so, and that should be good enough. Now let's go create our, oh, and also one other one other thing I forgot to create, which is the task component. So we'll say task.jsx. We'll simply say refce to pull up all this. And then in here, it's going to take three props, task, toggle task, and on toggle. And we'll just give this div a class name of task component so that we can style it later on in the video. Get rid of that. And then we'll create an input. 
give it a type of checkbox, and then we'll say checked will be equal to task.complete. So this will be a Boolean determining whether the input should be checked or not. And for the unchange event, we'll just say handle toggle task. And I also haven't created this button yet, so hopefully I'm not confusing you guys too much already. And then on double click, we'll just say on toggle so that when the user clicks their mouse two times on the input, it's going to run this on toggle function. So now let's create the handle toggle task function. And in here, we'll just say toggle task. We'll pass in task task.id because in react a checkbox input is defaulted to where you can't actually check the box so you have to somehow write out your own code to make it work so that's why we have to do all this complicated stuff so now let's go to our task list component and do refce once again we want to import task from dot slash task and there we go we've successfully done that so basically in here it's just gonna Take in three props once again, so tasks, toggle task, and on toggle. And we're just gonna write some JavaScript code in here. Well, it's really JSX, JavaScript XML. And then we want to do tasks.map. And then for the individual item, we'll just call it task. And this is where the power of React starts to shine. So you can start reusing your component so that you don't have to type out the same lines of code over and over again because that's just gonna get repetitive. Like, you're only going to be changing one thing about the code and you have to type it out like hundreds of times while in react you can just use the dot map function it's going to, and it's going to loop through all the elements that you have and display it onto the ui and it's just so much more time efficient and so we'll give it a key of task.id because each task will have its own unique id and then task which will just be task toggle task will be toggle task and then on toggle will be on toggle and now let's go back to our app.js and create a function called add task so we can say let task name equals tasks ref dot current dot value which will grab the value of the task that the user inputs into the input field and then we can say let id equals math.floor and then math.random times 10,000 times 10,000. So the odds of us getting the same ID twice is pretty unlikely, but it could happen, but it's very unlikely though. And then we can say if task name equals equals an empty string, that means the user didn't input anything. So we can return an alert, which will say, please add a task. And then after that, we can say set tasks and we can get the previous task, so we'll say previous to do's, and then we'll just want to return an array, and we'll map, we'll spread over tasks from the previous state, and then we'll say that we want to append onto a new task, and we'll give an ID of the randomly generated ID we created with that variable, and we can say the name property in the object will be task name, which is whatever the user inputs into the input field, and then the complete status will be false. So as you guys may remember from our task component, the checkbox has a Boolean tasks.complete. So back in app.js, we're passing it down as a prop into task, and it's taking that prop and using that Boolean to determine whether the checkbox should be checked or not. So its default value will be false, so it won't be checked. And then we can say tasks ref got current dot value. We can set it to null so that after the user has hit the button, it's going to reset the input to, to be empty again. And then let's create a few more functions. Let's create the toggle task ID function. So this will take in a parameter called ID. And in here we can say const new tasks. And what we want to do here is just spread over our tasks state. And then we'll say const task singular. Then we say new tasks dot find and pass in task for the individual item. We will say task.id equals equals id. So it's going to filter and look for the task that matches the id we passed in. And we can say task.complete. So we can set the complete status to be the opposite of what it was before. And this function is what allows us to toggle our checkbox. And then now we just want to say set tasks and set that to new tasks to update our state. And then down here we can say function remove tasks. And in here we'll just want to do const new tasks. And although we're using the same variable name, they're in different scopes, so we can do that. So we can say tasks.filter, and then we want to look for the task that has the complete status of false. So this 
exclamation point is pretty much saying find all the tasks that has the complete status of false. And then we want to set tasks to new tasks. So this will pretty much remove all the tasks and leave us with the ones that are still not completed yet and remove all the ones that are complete. So now we can create another function called remove all tasks. And this one is fairly straightforward. All you do is just say set tasks and set it to an empty array. And that should empty out our state. And one more function, we'll want to call this clear storage. And as you can tell by the name, we'll be clearing our storage. So we'll just say local storage.clear. And that should clear everything in the storage. And we can alert to, to the user and letting them know that the storage has indeed been cleared. So we can just say storage has been cleared. Refresh the page to see your results. And that and then once they refresh the page, they should notice that their tasks their tasks aren't being persisted to a local storage anymore. Anyways, that's pretty much all the functions we need to create. So let's go into our return statement here and go in between the app div and change the class name to container. And in here we'll just have an H1 and give it a class name of project title. So we'll call this React.js task tracker. So let's take a look at how our browser looks so far. And yeah, there we, there we go, we have our h1. So now we want to say tasks.length. We want to check if the length is equal to zero. And if that is the case, then we'll render out an h1, give it a class name of total tasks. And then in between the h1, we'll just do tasks.filter and we'll say task and look for the tasks that are, are not complete. And we want to say dot length. So we just want to find how many tasks there are that aren't complete. And then we can just hard code this left to do. So this should tell us how many tasks we still have left to do. So right now the tasks length is zero, which is why none of this is showing up on the browser. But if I actually made it to where the length isn't zero, then this should run. And now I'll just copy in the rest of this code so that you guys don't have to watch me type out all of this monster right here. Like, look at all this. My, my eyes already bleeding just looking at all this. Anyways, that should render out four buttons. And I've given each of them a custom color and set values for each of their props. So that's pretty much all I should do. So let's take a look at it. And there we go. We have our add task button and all the other buttons. So we're making progress here. Now it's time to style up our project and make it actually look nicer. So I'm sure you guys don't want to watch me type out all the tasks. So I'm just going to go find the styles and paste it in for you guys. So you and there we go, our styles have been applied to our task tracker, so now let's give it a try. So I'm going to say task1, and then hit add task. Huh, oh no, looks like I made a made an error of some sort, so let's go find that. So after 5 minutes of searching, I finally found what I did wrong. I forgot to type task.name, which is supposed to make the task name show up onto the browser. So now, as you can see, our task has been... is now visible. So let's try again this time. So we'll say task1, add task, task2, and then add task. And I, now I'm going to check it and then remove task. And if I click remove again, it's not going to remove it because I didn't check it. I didn't mark it as complete. And now it's working. And let's test the local storage and see if it's actually working or not. So I'm just going to enter in some random stuff like that. And then refresh. Once again, it looks like I did something wrong. So let's go find it. Alright, now let's test it out one last time before we wrap it up for the video. So I can type in something like task1 and then hit add, task2, hit add again, and now if I mark this as complete and then hit remove, it should remove the task, and it does indeed. And if we hit remove without actually marking it as complete, then it's not going to do it. And if we hit delete all task, single task, and there we go. So everything appears to be working as how it should. Now let's test the local storage aspect of it. So let's add a bunch of random tasks like this and then refresh. And looks like something went wrong. I'm not really sure what it is. Um, I, I will go debug this project after the end of this video. So if you guys can find the errors, please comment where I made the typo down below and I would really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe and have a nice day. Thank you.